Welcome to Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt is a weekly call-in talk show typically dealing with issues in the criminal justice community here in Harris County. I'm Franklin Bynum, your host this evening. Uh, we are live tonight. Uh, the number will flash on the screen in just a moment. Uh, and it's FRA. Hey, man. <laughs> and my... Hey, this is 2019. And I'm here with a throwback show of two of my favorite people and friends, lawyers, advocates, judges, humans of the world. Ladies first, Mrs. Sarah Wood <laughs> and honorable friend, Franklin Bynum. Hey. How are y'all doing today? Doing fine. Yeah? So, let's get into it, man. What's up? I love the hair. I remember. I remember the hair. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, the old show. You know, look at this. Yeah, what is going on here? Who is that guy? Who is that oh, guy? Man. Yeah, I know. Do you see that? Yeah. Todd, Todd, who is watching, you know, uh, Todd. You call it Carried in? the show forward for years, you know. Todd should, uh, yeah, call, call her. July 18, 2019. Welcome to another edition of Unreasonable Doubt. Call in at 713-807-1794, Twitter at HCLA underscore TV. Here just to chat. What's going on? How, you're a judge now. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess mean, we should like introduce ourselves. It's been a few years. It's been for a both few of us, years. right? So like, who are you? Well, I'm Sarah Wood, and I work for the Public Defender's Office. I've been an HCCLA member since, like, 2005. Um, I've been, this is my third time coming on the show, and, you know, We've it's, been trying always, to, it's always fun. We've been trying to get Sarah on for a minute because she's, she's super busy at the PDO, kicking butt, writing, getting opinions. I know something just recently happened, and apparently... Um, you are the reason that mitigation is not required for felony cases. I'm kidding. That was a joke. I mean, <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding, yeah, that's, but right, that's I'm a, kidding. That is actually like an urban legend. No. So, so uh, okay. So, what so here's the thing. I am not doing appeals anymore. I did appeals for the public defender's office for seven years, and I love writing, I love researching, I love arguing, but I could not do it anymore because... I tell you what, like, and so, and so I'm used to losing, okay? Like, losing is part of being a criminal defense attorney, and I totally get that. But criminal appeals in this jurisdiction have, like, a 1% reversal rate. Other states, 15%. And the reason it's a 1% reversal rate is not because we do everything perfectly here, okay? So I just got tired of writing briefs and working my butt off and having nobody read it, basically, all right? So, like, appeals, there's no such thing as the law. And the so, law does not exist. And so now, if, if you're not folk, uh, doing primarily appeals, are you in the trial division? Are you administration? Are you overseeing, supervising? Where are you at now? What are you doing? Well, so that's a good question. Um, one of the great things about working at the public defender's office is that uh, the office is very flexible, and to a large degree, you get to choose your own adventure. Um, so right now I'm mostly doing uh, policy work. I guess my title is um, special counsel to the public defender. Um, so, you know, I'm involved in a lot of different projects. I'm working a lot on bail reform, site and release, um, going to a ton of meetings, getting to know, like, how the county operates kind of behind the scenes. Uh, and it's a new day. And the reason, like, I love what I'm doing right now is because there's people in charge in the government that actually care and want to hear what we have to say. That is wonderful. It's wonderful. That's it's amazing. Ama it's amazing. It's a new day right now. It's amazing. So we're getting things done. Things are changing. Um, I mean, it's night and day from a year ago. And we have also the Honorable Franklin Bynum. Hey. How you doing, man? Good. It's been a few years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, along the same lines, you know, Sarah and I came up together, both worked at the appellate division of the PD's office. Um, Weren't, and, are you? Did, weren't, I, last I checked, you were, or remember, you were, you were shooting for the board certification of appellate law. I am. Right. Yeah. yeah no, I'm I, board I, certified. I, I, right. Yeah, yeah, we we certified. both took it at the same time. We did. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough to get to. You got to get a lot of oral arguments. You got to. Yeah. A lot of oral arguments. A lot of. A lot of them. You know, nodding their heads and being, oh, 
oh, yeah, so very interesting. And then just like affirming the conviction, you know, and then leaving being like, oh, I, I think I, I think I did all right, you know. But um, but we're both kind of doing now like systemic work, right, in different right. ways, right? Special counsel at the PD and now, you know, I'm a judge, it turns out, right? Uh, have you, court have you settled in the chambers? Uh, have I what? Have you settled into your chambers? No, 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 never, never. You know, uh, you know, my friend, uh, I take cues. For, uh, I, on in this way, I take a cue from my old friend Kristen Guinea, who was just like, you know, this is a temporary job. You know, sure. like, I'm, and and not only is it a temporary job, right? But I'm in a temporary chambers, right, in the CJC, because we moved back in. I mean, we took over a system we had been displaced for because of Harvey and for whatever reason. I mean, everything was a mess, right? I mean, we took over. It's kind of like you, know, you take over the spaceship and it's crashing and you're just like, ah, oh, like, <laughs> where are the wires? Like, let me, like, put some stuff together, you know? And, and uh, we're losing a lawsuit and we're in a bad building and wah, and we're barreling down into the atmosphere, you know? And that was kind of like my January. And um, we managed to get back into the CJC, but, like, temporarily. And right. so, I mean, not temporarily, but, but in temporary spaces within the CJC. So the courtroom I'm in now is... You know, courtroom 11-4, which is such a funny kind of like nomenclature that's never before been known. And I've had lawyers come and be like, what is with this like dash one, two, three, four in the courthouse? And it's just like, the reason is, is because the intention is that we'll be shuffled up and down the floors as they finish renovating different floors, right? So it's like, oh, well, court eight right now is courtroom 11-4. Maybe in the future it'll be courtroom, you know, 9-2. Who knows, right? So, um, do we have any idea as to when uh, the CJC is going to be complete and and all repaired, all systems go? 2022, they say, 2022. or so. Yeah, wait, what year is it now? Yeah, <laughs> 2022. Yeah, yeah. We have no idea. Do, do, you know, do you know what they have to do? I mean, A, fix the elevators, that's, that's one, but are there still floors that are destroyed and that aren't, aren't usable? The idea is, and yes. for anyone who's been in the courtrooms, right, we're all familiar with the, the sound paneling on the sides and then the oil stains from people's heads on the sides, right? So there are a number of things that are going to happen to the courtrooms, right? They're going to um, raise the sound. They're going to put wood paneling uh, down where people's heads rest because court's boring and put the soundproofing above where heads rest and replace some flooring and do some kind of like touching up and re carpet in the back hallways and, and on and on, right? So there, there's... Uh, that, has there that's... been any discussion regarding update uh, as far as technology? I don't know about that, but that typically, like, that's a smaller question than the, the build-out, you know? Sure. I mean, it's a big question, but I, I certainly, like, you know, we'll have the latest and greatest TV screens and, and so on in the courtrooms once they get built out. Well, you know, in the, in the civil building, they have the, for the video hookups, they have a VGA and HDMI. So it's very simple. If you have a computer, you can hook up these kind of things. However, in the CJCs, that's in the civil building, in the CJC, they just have the VGA so you're going to have to have a VGA, because no laptop or, unless you're going to bring your desktop of some sorts, has a VGA to laptop connection. You have to buy a little connector. In, yeah, that's in the ancient. Ancient, it's ancient technology. Ooh. Yeah, we got to fix that. I mean, the CJC is just the inferior it, building in so many ways. You can just look at the outside. The CJC is the Tower of Tears. And the, yeah. This, yeah. Tower you know, the of The civil terror. building is with, like, the Palace of Cash. I don't know. You know, I, uh, so we had a, the HCLA board meeting at the PD's office. And it felt good to kind of just be back in there and everybody was kind of, you know, stretching out a little bit and getting their rooms together. And I think it felt good. One thing I did notice was a lot of the individual, a lot of new faces at the, at the public defender's office. Yeah. It, it was really cool to see a lot of my friends that uh, were previously re private attorneys and now they're in the PD's office. It was really good to see them. And it seemed like everybody was getting settled in their offices and such. How was the transition from, where were you before and then where are you now? How was that transition? transition? Yeah, well, you know, when I first started with the Public Defender's Office and, and Franklin was there, you know, we had cubicles in 1310 Prairie, which is like one of the county administration sure. buildings. And we had like, what, 10, 20 lawyers. And, you know, we didn't even have offices. That's when we started back in 2011. 
Then we moved over to the CJC. We got the 13th floor. They built it out all special for us. You know, they reserved the unlucky 13 for the defense attorneys. But, hey, that's I our like lucky it. number. I like it's it. great floor. It's beautiful. And so when Harvey hit, um, you know, which is just ridiculous that a 20-story building would somehow be flooded. Um, so, so Harvey hit, demolished the building, whatever. And, you know... In my heart, I used to sometimes wish that, like, you know, the courthouse would be destroyed somehow, right? right, right the right, Tower right, of Tears yeah, right, would come right, down. Right. But, um, but then once it happened, like, it was sad, and it, that, was my, that was my office, and, uh, you know, it didn't really help things. Um, but I actually, that's a whole other story I can get back to. That was part of a miraculous confluence of events that's led to the new day today. But anyway, so Harvey hit, and they put the public defender's office over in uh, 1301 Franklin, which was the old, old jail. Right. From the 80s, or no, not even the 80s. I don't know. It, was that building old. just before y'all moved in, and now that y'all moved out, is it just empty? Like, is, is that There's, space just empty? You know, the DA intake is over there. There's some clerk's offices over there. What's um, interesting is, 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 I mean, it, it bears saying, right, that, you know, we have a brand new joint processing center, which we'll talk about eventually, right? But, like, the DAs are still, like, video conference in. Like, why aren't the DAs, like, at the table, in the courtroom, at the hearings in there, it's because they're afraid, you know? I mean, it's it because they, they're, they're gonna, like, they have to be, like, video beamed in from the old jail, right? From the, the empty jail, right? Right. And that is the reason, right? Is because they, you know, they fear for their safety. And they so, have security concerns. And, like, the old jail that we were in, like, all of the jail cells just remain, like, from their current, you know, their old state in the 80s, they're just, like, empty. So, you know, 13 floors above us, there was like basketball courts up there. Did y'all get, y'all get, did y'all get access? It, that would have been cool. No, like the first day we moved in, the maintenance guy came in and he was like, you know, don't worry, it's probably not really haunted. Just don't go on the fifth floor. <laughs> and so our offices were literally in old jail cells. I mean, like literally <coughs> there were like little windows with bars here and there. That is incredible. So we just moved back um, into the CJC, and so we've got the 13th floor, and we're home, and it's great. Um, you know, and that was a year and a half. You have two floor. You have two floor, or like two and a half, or one and a half. Yes. Something? And so we've expanded a whole lot, and we've got half of the 12th floor. So right before Harvey hit, the DA's office had moved into half of the 12th floor. Or they were going to. They never moved in, did Probably they? Probably not. No, they never moved in. They built out half the 12th floor, right? to the specifications of, I guess, Kim Og, or maybe Devin Anderson was involved. I mean, it's on and on. I mean, on the old show, as we saw, like, I, mean, I remember talking about the show after Mike Anderson won the primary against Pat Likas, you know, I mean. That's goodness. wild. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the, how that culture's changed. Or, well, yeah, yeah I mean, no, I mean, I think that. that's what we're all talking about, right? But I mean, the, the floor was built out, right? The 12th floor, half was pretrial, half was, unoccupied and the DA's office whoever was running it at the time they they made the plans you know built this Cadillac office you know with these wood desks these finely finished desks that then had <coughs> mechanical they would rise they were standing Digital. desks yeah and they had a, a media room like a million dollar media room where you know they had you know, you could, you know, beam in messages from outer space or something, you know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's no, very nice. The media room is not just for watching films. It's for filming in. So there's, like, all of these fancy lights on the ceiling, just like the room that we're in now. It's wow. for, like, it's it's nicer yeah. than this, actually. Wow. I mean, it's like for calling press conferences to say that for whatever reason that there's blood running in the streets or something, you know. It's like amazing. Whatever, whatever there is to be afraid of, right? Like, uh, it's be afraid in, like, full HD, and you know. So it's, and so where's, and it now it just sits in ruins? No, uh, the public defender's office, like, we got that space that they had, like, built out very extravagantly. I mean, we're, like, embarrassed almost to be occupying that space with the marble trimmings and the thousand dollar desks i mean it doesn't really that's, feel that's right to cool. us right fair enough fair but it was it was, was it paid how was it paid for was it paid by by seizures by taxpayers by whom i i don't know i mean it's county property and 
his county property. Was it? Ooh, it wasn't seizures. I bet it was. It was. It was straight up commissioner's court, old commissioner's court. When the DA's office sure. would roll into commissioner's court and get all the money they wanted for whatever they wanted, you know. And that certainly is different now, you know. And yeah. uh, you know now they, I guess they like come up with whatever, whatever reason, you know, whatever pretext they come up with for more funding this week. You know, they put on Friday before the commissioner's court agenda and put it on the emergency items list, and then come in and you know, harangue and insult commissioners and, and think that that's what's going to get them some money. Well, they just pumped, what, how much was the, the Joint Processing Center? I was there today. I was, it was very nice. It's, it's very like nice. the airport. Yeah, it's, it's like nice. the airport. I, to, to me, the Joint Processing Center is like the, you know, it, it's like a combination like airport and emergency room. You know, it's like, it's like the airport in that we're all confined in the airport, right? We're all a little bit confined in the airport. And people in the JPC are actually confined, right? Don't, don't let me make light of it. But there's freedom of movement. People aren't shackled. I mean, the old, the uh, IPC, which is the, what, the, what is the I in it? Processing center. Inmate. Inmate processing center, right? You know, I mean, that was a dungeon, you know, and people were in shackles. They were piled, Was piled. that over at the Red Building on 49 San Jacinto? What was that? It was over, it was over on Commerce Street, right? Sure, so, okay. So, yeah, you enter yeah. on 49, okay. right? Sure. But then you go down and right. the exit, people were released onto Commerce Street. And... It was, I mean, you, I would, I only came in and, and saw that and became familiar with that place later in its life, right? Late in its life when it was about to be replaced and when detention rates had gone down. But they would look at the, they would show me these like concrete dungeon cells and be like, oh yeah, we used to have like 80 people in here. And it's like, how on earth do 80 people fit in there, right? Like what, what were y'all doing? So the JPC is different in the sense that you're sitting in a hard plastic chair like at the airport. You're not shackled like at the airport. You're not free to leave basically like the airport. There's some natural light, but not a lot. And like the emergency room, you most people, at least in misdemeanors, um, and, and in, to some extent in felonies, like you know you're going to get out of there at some point. You just don't know when, right? <laughs> and so, and also like the emergency room, people keep flowing in who have like way worse situations than you, you know. And you're like, whoa, 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 you know. Like you're sitting in the emergency room and somebody walks in, like, like a towel over their yeah, head and they're bleeding, bleeding, and you're like, oh man, well, you know, I just busted my kneecap, right? And yeah. that guy's head is open, right? So I, I guess I can wait, you know. I mean, and that's the. That is the feeling there. It's a grim feeling. It's not a good feeling. I'm not making light of it, but certainly it's improvement than an actual dungeon. When I went and visited, there were the securest phones and every, and I, and I went to one, you know, room number one and had the machine that you could, uh, the video chat machine in there and I went to room number two and the video chat machine was in there. I went to video three, room three and the video chat was in there. <coughs> and I felt, I was trying to get to the room where there's no video chat in there. Only because I don't trust these things, and I think it's recording me, even they're not picking up the phone. But is the new Joint Processing Center uh, equipped with um, the technology to, uh, to your knowledge, to discuss and to talk to your lawyers and or family and or visit, and are, do you think they're secure, or... Or do you know? Okay, so I, I worked, um, you know, in my transition out of appellate, I worked bail inside the jail for about a year. And so I spent a, a lot of that time was in the IPC, the old dungeon. And then, um, you know, I assisted with our transition to the new joint processing center. I actually ran the first docket that ever happened at the joint processing center. And I, I, awesome. and I did, like, inform everyone, you know, just to let you know, you are the first people ever coming through this building. For whatever it's worth, I don't think they were impressed. They were very tired. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so what was your, your question was about... The technology. Uh, yeah, so, okay, yeah. so, 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 like, the, bot uh, the second floor of the JPC is all the booking center, and that's for people that are just arrested and they're waiting to go to court and have their bail hearing or to be released, okay? And the third floor is um, about 400 beds that uh, are for people that are the lowest risk, for people that they think are liable to be bailed out soon. 
Okay. And uh, they've got in-person visitation for attorneys, and that's what you went to. You got to speak to them in a booth. But if you're a family member, you have to go to a uh, video visitation booth. I saw that. In the that's lobby. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't see very many video booths, at least when I went through. Are there a lot of them? I've never seen a uh, like a lot of people in there visiting. I think I think like the third floor is sort of a transitionary. Sure. There's not, they don't stay there very long. Like I think when they get moved to the third floor, they either bail out quickly or they get moved on let, to let, one of the other centers. They're also short-term visitors, weekenders, things like that. Okay. Like not, not a lot, not in like a visit heavy kind of population is the idea, right? Is that if you're just checking in for weekends, you don't leave the booking center to go across the street to sure. Baker 701 San Jacinto, right? That you're, you know, you book into one building and you book out of that building, right? And that's good. It reduces incarceration times. Got to call her. We got a call. Call her. We got a call. Call her. Call her. Is that who? What? Is that DuPont? What's up, call her. Who's that? Yeah, it's me. Yo, hey. that's DuPont. Yo. Did, did you see the? Did you see your? Did you see the picture I posted on Facebook with you with the hat and the and the beard? No, I didn't see that, but thanks for judging so it up. I was able to catch the intro. Yeah, you like uh, that? It's old school, man. What brought me back? What year was that, Mark? I don't know. Sorry. That was pro that was probably 2012. That was probably early 2012. And in fact, well, we I know it's after my dad died because I had my beard at that point. Yeah, remember it well. Um, well, <laughs> y'all look great, everybody. January 26. Hi, Hi, Todd. Uh, what was the day, Judge? January 26, 2012. Jeez, what is Man, are you kidding me? Man, ages what, uh, ago. Frank, Seven and a half years ago. Favorite, hey, Frank, what was your favorite show back then? Do you have one? You know, it was, I think it was that one, actually. It was the one that I showed up and that Mark Pirtle had found where you're wearing the cowboy hat, right? It's the one where you're wearing the hat, you know, and you were like, I'm wearing a hat. That was the best. Weird. Look at that. Look, Look at, at this that, hat. man. Look at that. Oh, man. Didn't you just play a clip of this for me at your house? So, so you? Yeah, yeah. I, I have all the <laughs> old just, reasonable yeah, doubts, like, that. on in, in the Amazon cloud <laughs> or something, right? And, and, I, and I did, and I do play it. Like, if you come to my house, I'm going to play one of a few things, right? I'm going to play an old reasonable doubt. I'm going to play um, one of the HCCLA banquet videos from Times of Yore that Rob Fickman wrote and directed, and it's brilliant. Oh, right? They're yeah. both brilliant. Or, or I'm going to play the, sh the reality show Sisters-in-Law, right, which, pff, man, uh -huh. is really the flavor of the week right now. It re really gives a lot of insight into where we are with the DA's office, you know. I like to imagine that, like, you know, the, 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 the C-suite of the DA's office just, like, looks a lot like the show Sisters-in-Law or the show... On this network, uh, Truth and Justice, or what's it called? Truth and Justice with Vivian right. King or something. Is, yeah. Is that still going? I don't know. Uh, Mark? I think yeah, so. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I, it's on my DVR. Um, um, what's up with that new set, JV? The, the what? The new set. Well, a uh, 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 judge wanted the fern, so we got the fern. I don't know. Well, tables are oppressive, man. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he, want, he wanted the Tesla. What's line the table and, for? And the lava lamp. Yeah. I think it's a palm, yeah, really. Uh, hey, it's tropical. It's it, you know we're just we're doing uh you know it's it's reasonable doubt after dark you know. It's a little uh, different these the, days. We still have the oh, Starbucks cups. Swim. Hey, one other question for Judge. Judge, last time I saw you, um, there was word that potentially we were going to get new magistrates, but that couldn't be released yet. Is that still on the wraps, or uh, has that been announced? Or Okay, so I don't know if it's under wraps or not. We do have four new magistrates, and I know that the four old magistrates are gone, right? Connie Spence is gone. She's moved on to, like, precinct, you know, 12 or whatever precinct, right? And... Uh, uh, the many of the others have quit. Um, There's still two that are on their way out that are, that are still working. Joe Licata is still there, and Joe Wallace is still there. And I I know it's I know it's been announced that two of the lawyers from the public defender's office were chosen as magistrates. Did, did it? Um, can we reveal those names? Yeah. Or? 
Yeah, so um, Jen Gott. I heard that. And um, Diana oh, Olvera. I didn't know about Olvera. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah, cool. that's cool. Yeah. That's really They're cool. They're going to do a great job. It's, it's amazing. And I Jen. Yeah. Jen worked, you know, PC court inside the jail full time for, I don't know, like two years almost. Um, she was all over it. She knows everything about that process. So she's going to be... On top well, of those it. are two great candidates. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hang up so people, other people can call. But uh, it's good to see y'all. Thank Franklin. Thank you for doing that. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, that's a blast from the past. Yeah, I didn't do it. Mark Pertle did it. Thank okay. Thank you, Mark Pertle. Bless you. Yeah, Mark. Hey, I appreciate. I'll come on. The and there's show there's my show. daughter Mo. There she is. She's on TV. Hello, my daughter is is working the control room. Look at her. Nice. Yeah. Hey, y'all have a good weekend. Love you, Todd. Love you back. We'll see y'all. Hey, so if there's any other callers, it's 713-807-1794. Call in for the Honorable Franklin Bonham and Sarah V. Wood from the PDO's office. People and lawyers extraordinaire. <laughs> so, okay, so we've talked about the Joint Processing Center. Um, I'd like to talk about how, really quick, so you said there's about 400 beds. Uh, and therefore the most, I suppose, low-risk individuals. Um, I was wondering why the guy I was visiting there today was there and not at, you know, the right. Santa Cena, uh, 701 or Little or Big Baker. Um, it's, uh, without going into any details, but it's a 25 to life kind of DWI style. And he's a nice guy, and I, was, and I thought that maybe he was there because he had some sort of privileges or he was working or doing something. How are, is, are they go? Are they being placed there by the uh, the assessment that they get when they? It's probably not really that. Well there is a veterans organized. issue. There, there is they are. There is some preference for veterans, right? In in the JPC third floor housing, I've heard that. I haven't heard that, but it could be that that like that could be that. I, I don't know, right? But I'm sure some of it is just random too. I mean, I know that a lot. Of, you know, I mean, it's it's new. So the JPC was. a twinkle in the county's eye like 10 years ago um they put it on the ballot actually i, I don't know how long ago that was maybe five years ago and like the the people no, it was more than that and, and was more it? than that yeah uh, yeah it was uh eight? it was 2010 i think i think it was 20 okay 2010 i don't think it was eight i think it was 10 so like people were opposed to it because um you know we don't want to build more cells because then that would increase the arrests, you know, you, you build it and they will come. Just right. like widening 45, right? right. You build it, yeah. the cars will come. Right. right. Don't widen 45. Don't do it. <laughs> right. If you're listening, text Dodd <laughs> and Mayor Turner and all that, like, don't widen 45. Like, nobody wants that. Build some trains, for God's sake. Anyway. So, it, you know, it's an interesting moral dilemma. Uh, but they, So they finally built it after talking about it for 10 years. And, like, you know, it's really, it's progressive. It's it's kind of amazing um, because it's this open seating concept and so there are no cells. Whereas the old IPC and the booking center, it was like people crammed into like literal dungeon cells with no supervision beating each other up. Wow. Yeah, I mean it was, I can't even tell you how bad it was. I have pictures that are just unbelievable. Um, but the new place uh, is run by um, this guy named uh, Major Greg Summerlin of the Sheriff's office and like he had has this vision of like if you treat people who are arrested like human beings they will act like human beings and if you put them in this you know airport dmv style waiting room with televisions and seats um you know that they will act like like people who are just waiting and um, there was a lot of naysayers in the county, like, no, they're going to tear the place up. It's going to, you know, you, you can't just have them all in a room. But there's no cells. They're all in a big room. And, like, we interview them. Pretrial services talks to them. It's open booths. There's no walls or anything between us. We walk into this room where there's 100, 150 people all sitting in seats, anywhere from traffic tickets to murders. And they're all the latest, arre the latest arrests made by whom? Made by everybody, 
I mean, any county, uh, I mean, pardon me, any agency within the county? Any agency within the county brings them there. Some right. agencies still keep their own jails, right? I mean, I think I think that like, you know, West U PD will still take you to West U jail or something, right? Or like Jacinto City PD will still take you to Jacinto City jail. Like we're working on improving that process, right? I mean, you're kind of the worst off in, in many ways, at least if you're arrested on a misdemeanor, if you're arrested by one of these agencies that maintain its own jail. I mean, these agencies, you know, are, are not great jailers and should get out of the jail in business and should go straight to the JPC, but for whatever reason, um, th there are some hangers on. I would say, well north, now that HPD is over, taking people directly from countywide to JPC, we're probably north of 80% of all bookings go direct to JPC. I'm just kind of spitballing, but and I assume at the county, the, whatever precinct they're in, they're the ones that are transporting the individual to the JPC. Yeah, because they all have to come to you know sure. to court and have their their uh, you know they have to go in front of a judge, have their rights read, um, have a probable cause found or not found by one of the magistrates, and have their bail set. And so you know, the public defender's office represents everybody that gets arrested at these bail hearings and um, it's it's so fascinating because you sit so I you know I did this for like a year or so and but you sit down and interview people who've just been arrested I mean like a guy arrested for uh, aggravated assault you know for beating up his girlfriend with a sledgehammer that's covered in blood you know but, or, uh, or you know sitting next to the poor dude that just got arrested for driving with his license invalid. Right. And so they had this great vision where there's going to be natural light and there's going to be seats and they're going to treat them like human beings and they're going to have TVs. Semi-private bathrooms. Yes. Very important, right? You, you're not shackled. You can get up and walk to the bathroom on your own, kind of like middle school. You kind of got to like let the people know, hey, I'm going to the bathroom, right? Hey, hey, like I'm getting up. Like, I'm not, not making any trouble. I'm just going to the bathroom, just like middle school, right? I'm taking the bone. I went to Lanier, right? You get the bone, right? And, like, it works, you know? If you treat people well, they act well, generally. I mean, I go to the JPC all the time. And, you know, yeah, people charged with serious crimes. People charged with minor crimes, right? You know, sitting together in hard plastic seats. And, like, it works, you know? I mean... So much of the violence of the system, like, you know, perpetuates more violence, right? So if you scale back the violence, right, what does it result in for the citizens of Harris County? Less violence. Well, let's, yes. talk, let, let's talk about... I do have one other uh, thing yes, about it, the JPC. So, so they had this vision of processing people rapidly, treating them like humans, and making it a much more humane experience. And, and that is what's happening, and the sheriff's office is doing a great job However, there is one thing that is really messing up their vision, and that is that people are having to wait in these chairs for insanely long amounts of time. And so what people don't realize is that when you get arrested, you are not actually charged yet. And so the DA's office has this crazy delay time between when the person gets to the booking center and when they actually file a charge. Okay? okay. So you're not able to bond out or go to court or have anything until the DA's office files that complaint. And it can take that, you know, it can take them 8, 12, 24, 48, 60 hours to get a charge filed. That's a problem. It's a real problem and people are not able to sleep. They're getting sleep deprived and they are having incidents in that big booking room because you're not it's not designed to keep somebody for more sure. than like 12 hours you know and so there's a lot of pressure being put on the DA's office right now to speed up the process because it's really it's it's messing things well, up. Well that could that could that could lead to all sorts of problems. It's a safety risk. Sure. Because you know, the sheriff's office doesn't appreciate it because it is a safety hazard um, and, and it's really unclear exactly what is causing these delays. Um, but, you know, a, a judge can't sign an order to release somebody if there's no cause number, well, there's no case created. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not so unclear, right? I mean, I think that's being somewhat diplomatic. I mean, you have, uh, you know, police officers that will arrest someone, you know, dump them off at the processing center and then just, like, go off shift without finishing their, uh, their entries into their computer system, right, which is called DIMS, right? But, like, let's be like, oh, like... 
you know, so I mean, the one rap about police is that like they, they're in it for the overtime and they're picking up arrests for overtime, but also they're in it for, you know, the opposite's true that they're just dumping people off and like going off shift and then like eight, 12 hours later when they come back on, they, they, they pick back up and when they get to it, right, they finish the all caps kind of right. statement that they, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, the problem is caring, right? I mean, nobody cares, right? The DA's in, DA intake doesn't care, right? Police agencies don't care, right? They're like, what, people are sitting in plastic seats? Who cares, right? They should be, they should be happy. They're sitting, they have natural light, right? Yeah. I mean, this is the converse of it, right? I mean, it's like, oh, this is much better. We're treating people much better. And so, like, yeah, like... Who cares? And 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 like that is the attitude through and through. And when when I as a as a as a policymaker now in the system, as Sarah as a policymaker in the system now goes to these agencies and says, why you know why are people sitting here? You know why is this happening? Let's and they're just like uh, you know, who cares? Let's talk about why people are sitting in jail. What's up with the bail lawsuit? Where are we at? Uh, I heard. There's, there's the felony courts are getting bridged down their neck. What's going on with the misdemeanors? Uh, you, you said something about, they call it, there's like a number nine or something in there. What's, wh where are we at and what's the status of it? Anyone? Well. Go ahead. So we, so we took over, um, you know, there was one kind of shining light. Two, let's say two, right? It was, it was Daryl Jordan and then, and then the, the reborn, Mike Fields, right, who um, uh, devoted themselves to bail reform against the the many other judges who ha hired the you know bigoted anti-gay law firm and used public money to pay for it, and you know I, I it's we took over like I said you know the spaceship barreling towards Earth with the putting the wires together right, and so the what we did to implement bail reform is called Local Rule Nine, right. The, it's a bit esoteric, but I think people should know that the law is what the law is and the legislature sets it, but the way things are done and implemented at a local level is by what's called local rules. And the local rules we changed to say that everyone on a misdemeanor is released, period, right? Without seeing a judge, without a risk assessment, without some Enron billionaire's risk assessment, right? Like, if you're arrested for criminal trespass or shoplifting at the Walmart or, or, or all these things that fall in county court, right, you just are brought to the booking center and turned around as quickly as possible, except for a narrow category of people where the law requires conditions to be issued by a judge or certain other things, right? If you, you know, miss court and never came back to resolve it, right? If you, if you basically like disappeared, right? And then police pick you up. Assault family member, right? If you're, if you're charged with that, you need to be given a protective order, right? In, in an appropriate case, right? The law calls for protective orders, condi bond conditions, DWI second within five years, right? Let's order you to have an interlock and then release you, right? Certain categories of people that need to see a judge, see a judge. But most people don't need to see a judge. If you're arrested for, you know, stealing some food at the self-checkout at the Walmart, you don't need to see a judge to be released, right? We can just say by rule, you're released. And are, that's what's happening. Are you being, is, is, that, is that where the general order bond comes in? Or, so we have a, 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 a number of different bonds, names for, for how people are released. The general order bond actually is, is we, we, you know, we call it the go bond, right? <laughs> like go out of the JPC, right? Um, the general order bond is by general order of the judges by local rule, right? And, and so it is a personal bond, right? I mean, there's in t by Texas law there are only a few types of bonds, right? If you if you there's there's the bail money amount, right? And that is the money amount. And by the Constitution, you have to have a money amount set, unless you're no, unless you're, unless you're not. But for the most part. Um, you have to have a money bail amount set. And what we say is by general order, um, the money bail amount is set at a nominal amount and you're released on a personal bond. So the general order bond is a personal bond. So everyone gets, not everyone, but um, the vast, like vast majority. The, the, the target was 85%. 
we're coming in somewhat south of that, and we're always like looking and trying to figure out why. why? Yeah, why? Oh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, we're we're always in there digging in, trying trying to get it up. I mean, we want people to be released, sure. right? It's it's better for the community. The community is made safer by release. Think of it this way, right? In misdemeanors, right? And felonies are somewhat different, but not that much different, right? And that's a whole another bag. But the prosecutor standing there in, in misdemeanor cases, and they are cool with the person being released in every case for years, even under the old regime, right? Except they want to they want to extract conviction under duress, you know, and release the person. We just came in and said we just want to release the person without extracting a conviction right. under duress and let them fight their case as the Constitution and the law requires, right? It is it is the most basic, humane, lawful thing to release people on misdemeanors. My God, right? And we did it, and we did it fast. We did it faster, basically, than anyone thought possible. And it's happening, right? People are released on misdemeanors. Everything is fine. You know, the county's fine. You walk down the street, things are all right, right? Without this plea mill, with, without this plea mill existing. Yes. You know, we have deconstructed the plea mill in county court, and we did it fast. It's amazing. I remember, you know, because I've, I've taken I used I've taken appointments pre this movement and post this movement in court one, right? In court, in yeah. court one. I mean, in court one, yeah. Yeah. And I might have one person in custody for misdemeanors a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, not to say that I don't see that there's other people in custody, but prior to that. I would get, you know, you can max out on five a day on the misdemeanors, or maybe now it's seven, but... I think people, it's five. People still, uh, everybody's still adhering to the five, no more than that. Um, I used to get maybe four in jail and one on bond, or three on jail, two on bond. Now it's, everyone's on bond, which is fine. It's just perfect for me, because I get to set all these guys for trial, and we get to make, tell them, prove it. You have better results, right? ton better results yeah and they all yeah. all the and the only issue i have is that the district attorney's office needs to set the, the darn case for trial before they'll dismiss the stupid thing because yeah. that's the only time they look for it that's the only time they look out for it i'm, I'm i mean same as it ever was right? same as for it people ever on was. bond right but I mean, now we just eliminated the class of cases right. where where they're extracting pleas right, right? and you're back at right. the old i mean the dismissal rate so the bail lawsuit came and suddenly you know, the federal judge ordered this sweeping relief, right, that was like, oh, like the county really like dug in and, and defended the indefensible in, in a really unconscionable way, such that a federal judge like reached for the hammer, which is not a thing federal judges do a lot, right? And she was like, you know, you will release people, period. I will order you to release people. And what paved the way for that, honestly, was Daryl Jordan releasing people, right, following the law, in advance of that, that let the judge know. I know we all like to think that, like, oh, judges are going to follow the law no matter what, right? But in reality, if you have, you know, they're always going to be afraid of the consequences and of, of, you know, the law is full of judges worrying about floodgates opening, right? And the county was was talking about, you know, hellfire raining down. Gotham it, it, City. Well, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, interestingly, okay, so like statistically, since since the newly elected misdemeanor judges have you know, pretty much put everyone on bond in, that's charged with a misdemeanor. So, so like, right now, if you, if you look at the numbers of the people in jail, um, you know, there's, like, a few hundred people in jail on misdemeanor charges, um, as opposed to your, like, total number of, like, 9,000 people, okay? Mm -hmm. And so misdemeanors have always comprised of, like, less than 5% of the jail population. And so, like, all of this bail reform really didn't reduce that number that much, okay? So mm -hmm. it didn't actually reduce the jail population, which is kind of what we thought would happen. We're letting people out. We're reducing the jail population. But because of the way the plea mill operated, all of those people would have been released the next day anyways on a because time served. Because they would have taken time served. Plea. Interesting, so right. So the jail population has stayed pretty much the same because they were releasing people anyway, but the conviction rate has gone way down. I believe that. The dismissal rate in I county that. court I mean, yeah. shot to over 50% yeah. um, after the federal court judge said you have to release people. You can't just run a plea mill. 
and it's still his north of 50%. I, I think I, it's amazing. I, I know on this show, I, 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 I yelled, people are going to demand their trials because when people are in bond, it's a different game. It's just a different thing. Nobody's clamoring to get out because they got to pay their bills or rent. or and, and Nobody's just getting pleas forced down their throat. And it has been amazing. It's been so refreshing. <laughs> and you can see some of the, the old guard that's kind of left around, and they can see, like, why don't you just, you know, why don't you plead a case? It's like, I'm, because they, I'm just not. <laughs> just not going to plead a case. I, can, don't not gonna, I don't have to. Like, and my client's telling me, like, we want this trial now. The, now the problem is, that, from an individual who takes a lot of court appointments, um, is getting there now. Because I think there's still a lot of backlog, at least in the in some in the course that I work in, a lot of, where um, it's a it you got new judges, it's backlogged. Forever we didn't have a place where we could just the judges could just get trials going. We have a big problem with actually just getting there, getting there now. Um, and I've seen the the new wave of judges, um, and I'd like to see more of it uh, stand on their. Uh, discovery orders, stand on there, look, we're not going to be continuing things. You have to be ready, finally holding the state to their 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 duties and their their deadlines and their and what they have to do. And so it, it's refreshing, but we do now, at least in my opinion, uh, we're seeing a lot of trials and not enough trials actually happening, even though you know, there's a lot of trials still happening. I mean, it's still going on. In a lot of ways, you know, here we are, you know, six months in, right? And I only now feel like I have kind of my right. my sea legs about sure. it. Sure. Right? I mean, it, it certainly is not the right thing to do when you're taking over, you know, uh, a position of power within a system of control and oppression to then just, like, immediately, like, start grabbing and, and you know, trying to enact control, you know? I think that there's a lot of patience that comes with the job and learning and taking things in. And I want things to work better, like you say, right? I want things to run smoother. I want trials to be set and, and to go. Um, but we're all learning, right? I mean, it's a whole right. new world, right? And we moved buildings within those six months, right? right? So I think that we will get there, right? And you're right that the 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 so-called clearance rate, right, of cases, right, is down, right, in the sense that, you know, we're not chaining people to chairs if they're 15 minutes yeah. late and extracting yep. pleas, right? Because it wasn't the plea mill. On just, bond now, right? I mean, I but mean, even when people were on bond before, they the plea <laughs> mill still existed, right? It was just like an open air cage, right, where if they were like five minutes late because they load the docket up and they stuff people into a building that can't take it, and then it's just like, oh, well, you're late. Like, you can take a deferred today. I mean, I, it, it was, the old system was outrageous. And the thing is, isn't it amazing that six months in, that's a distant memory, right? That's, inc that's it's incredible. It's amazing. It's, it is like the twilight zone here in Houston. It's like, incredible. When I, when I first, um, it, when it first like really hit me, you know, back in January, like, you know, Trump is on the news and the federal government, everything is going crazy. And then, like, I walk into court and Franklin's on the bench doing a jail docket. And I'd never seen, you know, we've been friends for a long time, but I hadn't seen him actually being a judge yet. And I walk in and they're bringing this woman in front of him who's in custody and she's wearing orange and, she, you know, uh, they're going to do a plea. She's going to plead guilty. And like to get out, plea guilty to get out. Yeah, and like Judge Bynum looked at her and said, "Franklin's fine, <laughs> ma'am. You do not have to plead guilty to get out of jail. You're entitled to a bail that you can afford. Do you want me to give you a personal bond?" And she started crying. It's amazing. It's amazing. It can change so fast with just a little caring. You know, and, and uh, the old way is over. It's so funny to me. Like, I hear the probable cause statements on some of these cases, right? And it's like, how on earth for years did people rubber stamp this trash, right? That is obvious trash, right? Like, 
it is not lawful to detain this person for this. It is not, right? Read the Constitution. Read the law, right? There is in no universe where you are being fair is there probable cause in this case. But for years, there was. And it's so simple and it's so easy just to say no, right? No, you don't get to do this, right? There is no probable cause for this, right? You know, if you want to go back to the drawing board and, and, and do better and, and, and develop the case more, more power to you, right? Yeah. That's our system. Do some police work. Yeah. It, but a lot, it takes a lot of guts to do the right thing. So let's talk about some of the things that, um, that like, that, that, so you've been a trailblazer, you've, you're, you ran for judge, you've been in the news talking about some radical ideas, which quite frankly are just reasonable ideas, but radical in the sense of like doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you see on the, uh, that, that are the biggest things that are, that are facing, uh, maybe the the system, the justice system currently, and some of your visions or ideas. We have about seven or eight minutes, so we have time. But how about, like, pick one or two of them and we can talk Sure, about we'll have time to spare. Uh, you know, what are the problems? The problems are um, there is um, we continue to spend so much money on police and prosecutors and to deploy them against social problems as opposed to deploying our resources to actually solving social problems, right? Giving people housing, giving people health care. Instead, we, you know, no problem. And the analog in the, in the big scale of things is just like there's plenty of money to go, go to war with whoever, you know, right. flavor of the week, right? But there's no money for health care, right? There's plenty of money to arrest people, to jail them, to build new prisons and jails but there's no money to give people housing, even though it's cheaper and, and better for everyone if we do, right? And, and you know, the streets aren't on fire because they're just not, and they won't be. So that's the biggest, you know, changing a culture, I think, is, is the biggest problem, and that takes time. What are, what are you, th uh, from, the, from, a, from your own personal opinion, is also on, as a, in the public defender's office, what do you think... Uh, where do you see it going? What do you see the biggest challenges that the public defender's office faces as far as, or what would, what are the biggest goals or things that you see that the public defender's office would like to accomplish or things that are important to, to focus on? Well, we're rapidly expanding right now. Our budget uh, this year was almost doubled. Um, so we're going to end up having 100 employees. Um, wow. You know, by next spring, I think. Uh, so that is a challenge. Uh, in itself, you know, learning how to manage that many people. Um, you know, and the beauty of our office is that we hire really good people who, you know, believe in doing right for their clients. And so there's not a lot of micromanagement. Um, you know, we feel like if the attorneys really care about their clients, they're going to spend as much time doing the right thing, you know, that they need to. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a challenge. Um, what, what do you think in Harris County um, in the next five years is the, is the biggest thing that's coming our way? I mean, I'll throw it out there. I think the, the MAC, the Manage Assigned Councils, is a, big, is a big idea. The MAC. There's three minutes left. MAC, go. <laughs> <laughs> what is the MAC? Yeah, what? Return of the Mac. What well, they're gonna. Mad they, Max. Well, you know, yeah. we could spend Mad an Mac. entire show discussing what the pros and cons are about a Mac. It's very interesting. The manager signed council, and you know, if you're if you're open next week, y'all could come talk about what's going on and what's happening. We haven't even talked about site and release. That's another. I know. Big well, thing that's well going we're right gonna now. talk about some of the things about you know money regarding government programs, what the prosecutor's office is doing. Uh, there, what is this thing, sight and release? Uh, that was a thing that was never happened in Harris County, as last I checked. But it's happening, sight the, and release. The, the, the put it on, I mean, I mean, that was a huge priority of mine coming in, right, was that the legislature authorized that certain categories of, like, minor offenses that you could write a ticket instead of arresting and booking and bringing to the booking center and, and going through the whole JPC rigmarole. And it was even pre-JPC, the, the IPC dungeon rigmarole, right? And 
So they always said it was a technology problem. You know, Mike Anderson, Devin Anderson, all these, all these kind of reactionary people over the years, just like, well, we're in favor of this, but it's a technology problem. It's like, well, I'm pretty good at technology, so like, let's like solve the technology problem. So the technology committee of the courts and and the district clerk and all this like formed kind of an ad hoc spinoff committee about site and release, and it was really it's, it's really funny and and you know this is probably something of a teaser to some later conversation, but to put it on a bumper sticker, the site and release committee is doing good work. We are going to get there, but it started out as, uh, as like people with stars on their shoulders from police agencies across the city, uh, particularly HPD, uh, coming in and saying that they didn't know how to write a ticket. That they'd never heard of such a thing. That it's like, what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? You're gonna you're gonna write the person's name down, and they're gonna come answer for a criminal charge? Like, what are you, what are you talking about, right? Like, how do you know it's the same person? You know, we gotta, you know, we have to. It's like, what? Don't you do this all the time, right? For 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 criminal offenses, for traffic offenses, and it's just like, you know, whoosh, no, I no, what, they, what, they don't know what we're talking about. Are there, what are the parameters? The general parameters for site and release. Is you it know, for it's, misdemeanors, it's, it's, yeah, misdemeanor. It's sort of like Class B shoplifting. You know, self checkout at Walmart. You know, you can just like step out of the Walmart and give them a ticket, as opposed to putting them in cuffs, driving them downtown. Right? Graffiti is one. I love that one. Oh, right? that's cool. You get busted for graffiti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the legislature gave us a list, right? And and what I love is talking about like the old days when we were talking about like the Mike Anderson primary. Like everyone loves to talk about like. Well, the legislature gives us the law, and, and we follow the law here. Well, the legislature gave us a law saying write tickets for these things, and Harris County never did it. <laughs> so we show up saying, let's write tickets for this, and it's like, oh, hey, whoa, whoa, what are, what are you talking about? That's crazy, right? So, like, we're just trying to follow the law in the books, and the law in the books is, is that these offenses are eligible for and should receive tickets and not be booked. And so we're working on it. It is going to happen. I promise it will happen. Here, look at the camera. I promise it will happen. We, <laughs> no new taxes. No, yeah, yeah. Read my lips. So, Re read um, my lips. Sight and release will happen. It's that's amazing. Sight and release. And yeah, now just, just for I mean, there's no need to clog the booking center with, you know, people stealing bread from the Walmart self checkout allegedly. What right. About oxtails. <laughs> love that. Whatever, as long as it's under the certain <laughs> I love limit. Love that. Yeah, I mean, look, my daughter is here, and she she wants to come out and like send the show out in the last three minutes. We got like thirty hey. seconds, right? That's the deal. Something hey. like so, it. Uh, Zero. Last word. Any anything else? Anything you wanna? Mm. Because next week we have a few. We could talk about the Mac, the entire show. Yeah, a whole Sign show. Release. The phone, the, like the phone lines will be busy if they we have will. a Mac devoted show. And also next Thursday, um, I would like, will probably be fresh off being chewed out by a federal court judge as a defendant. So stay tuned There's for that. There's so much happening. It is a we new haven't even day. touched that. We had a whole show. That'd be great. There's so much going on. How? Hey, roll credits. We're hey Mo, rolling. wave, wave. Hello, Franklin. Send us out. Hey, so, you know, thanks. Th thanks for tuning in, y'all. See you next week. For Bye. Franklin Bottom, Sarah Wood, hey, Unreasonable Doubt, I, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.